We have one ad advantage. We are the, the keepers of the holy grail of memory. And um, I'm, I, I wasn't a fan of Joschka Fischer, who used to be the foreign secretary in Germany from the Green Party, who used to be the foreign secretary like 10 years ago. And I remember that he, in this, in the, and he, we are exactly the same age, born in 1955. And I remember that he said in the Knesset in Jerusalem that he is not responsible for what happened in the Third Reich, but he's responsible for, or our generation is responsible to, to keep the memory, to spread the news, to talk about it, and to have um, a very lively um, memory of what could it be if, if, you, if you live in a dictatorship. Um, and I think that's our, that's our, it's at the same time our opportunity, but also the challenge. We have the object, objects to explain what it means to live under dictatorship. And Susan, it's not a long time ago, I'm not that damned old. And I, and I traveled in Franco, Spain, I traveled in Salazar's uh, Portugal, I traveled in, uh, in um, Greece where the junta was still um, in charge. I mean, I traveled exactly when the revolution started. Um, so what I mean is, it's just, um, as I said, I'm 61 and I remember very lively what it means to, to be in Salazar's Portugal and um, Portugal. Yeah, and very long hair, people said, don't, 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 don't walk around with hair like this, that will arrest you. You know, just things like that, and just having long hair was enough to be on this word. Yeah, exactly, but it's interesting that you focus on this word memory, because in many of the conversations that I'm having, some variation on the theme of memory is coming out. So, for example, Ian Levine, who is the Global Head of Programs at Human Rights Watch, is talking about how easily we forget uh, what happened with Nazi Germany. Uh, I spoke with Paul Thompson at the Royal College of Arts, and he said, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we had Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, or that we had um, Jewish refugees floating around in boats in the Mediterranean. And so this, this notion of the importance of memory to how society behaves ethically or not today and is, a, is a very critical theme. Um, but that's obviously something that frustrates you, really, if you have a certain age, and especially at this kind of job, um, is this short memory span. Mm -hmm. Dresden looked like Aleppo 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now, in Dresden, people are applauding in front of burning houses, where refugees used to live in, or were supposed to live in. So and I wonder know, if what, the media what, isn't what, what, what is that? I just don't get it. This is something I really, I mean, the older I get, the more I'm, makes me, drives me mad. I really don't get it. What is it? Really, what is it? But I'm really wondering if it isn't something, I mean, you mentioned media. I, I'm wondering if it isn't that the media is also not terribly focused on memory, on connecting the dots, on reminding everybody what certain moments in history looked like. There's such intensive focus because of the media access today through technology on what's happening now and on bringing, you know, the CNN, the 24-7, real-time what's happening. And I'm wondering if the media hasn't lost track of the importance of memory. Uh, and media, media are used by real people. Sure, that's an impact, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I think if someone is educated enough to understand how media works, there must, there must be more. Mm -hmm. It's just, again, it, I, I just don't get it. Maybe it's just this morning that I know it's about that. But it's, mm -hmm. even in my family, we have, come from this very solid southern German origin. But even there, there's a kind of war impact. So my parents met because of the war. Um, so, so wherever you go, the war was part of the, those components. We have all in our, in our family memories this horrible. I, think, I don't think there's, not, there's not one family who has met that. If you think about the US, all the immigrants coming as poor as So how can we not be looking at today through that lens? Very, very It's part of your family's DNA. And it's part you, of the society's DNA. And then you turn it around and say, okay, because it's part of your DNA, you don't want to be bothered with it because you have a better life today. But then be so generous and offer it to somebody else.